Well, folks, I am not a happy camper. I just got my gas bill in the mail the other day and 188 bucks for the month. That includes gas and electric, despite my gas and electric basically having the same amount, using the same amount compared to this month last year. I do keep detailed records and looks like the highest month for gas and electric total 152, but the 143 there that was circled was this same month last year. So you can see 188 compared to 143, a significant increase in the cost of energy. So in this video, I'm gonna show you some ways you can save on your heating bill. At least this is what our family does. Number one, let's go ahead and get started. Keep that thermostat low. We don't set ours more than 66 to 67 degrees during the day while we are home and we spend a lot of time at home. We wear lots of flannel, fleece, and slippers. Sounds crazy, but Got to insulate the toes and dress warmly. We don't walk around with t-shirts on, right? The next thing we do is make sure upstairs on the middle floor and downstairs, all of our vents are open appropriately. Keep in mind that heat rises, right? So you'll want to kind of take a look at your house and you can do a little Google research to see, you know, if I have a one story house, where, where do I want my vents to be open? Uh, we typically keep ours open on the top floor, middle floor, and then close them up a little bit more in the basement and other rooms like this bathroom here where we get, it gets really good heat. Uh, we don't need to keep that open all the time. It's kind of cracked a little bit, right? But you'll want to read your furnace instruction manual and talk to your furnace heating repair person, right? Just to make sure you don't want to, if you close off a couple of uh, vents, you don't, you want to make sure that doesn't cause damage or stress on your, on your furnace. But again, heat rises and it makes sense to address this. By the way, if you're new to the channel, click that like button, subscribe and share the video with uh, friends or family. If you think it might help them, would really appreciate that. All right, back to business here. We've got uh, windows that, so believe it or not, you may not have closed them all the way after uh, the you know nicer, warmer weather season. Um, I've kind of went around the house and found that, hey, a lot of them weren't actually locked all the way closed, which creates that perfect seal. And speaking of seal, if you put your finger along the edges of the window, kind of the gaps, you'll feel definitely, if it's cold outside, some a drop in temperature, like right there, for example definitely some cold air coming in. So what I like to do each winter season is just take a little bit of tissue paper or a little rag or something and go around the house and just kind of plug those. I know I'm not gonna open the windows during these cold winter months, so that's gonna help uh, keep cold air out and warm air in. A little jimmy rigged, but same color tissue to match the window trim. You, bear, you don't even know they're there. Just don't forget to take them out, right? And we do keep our blinds for the most part closed, unless we want light, of course, but that helps put those curtains over it, creates extra insulation. Another idea for you, possibly, if you keep, we know, noticed that in our son's room, if we keep the door closed, it becomes very, very cold. So we learned that we should keep the doors open, at least like this, if not more, throughout the house that it's actually the whole system is designed to kind of create airflow together. And, but we do, that said, we do close off, um, keep the doors closed to closets and things and pantries that we don't, we don't need to heat that space uh, necessarily. And we'll come into the furnace room here. Another tip for you. We regularly change the air filter in the furnace. And also, of course, we have it professionally serviced every year or so, depending on what the instruction manual for your furnace says. You might want to think about doing that. Also, if you look up, you'll see this little lever thing here. Can you see that? If you pull that, it will actually close off airflow to your house. So you want to make sure that's all the way open so that airflow is indeed going into your house. Another idea, get one of these little electric heater boxes. These are awesome. I've had this puppy for 10 years or so, and it's a great place. We don't spend a lot of time in our basement but when we're here we crank that up about i don't know 20 minutes before and it really puts out some nice heat another idea go along if you have a sliding glass door kind of like the windows i was talking about earlier up above and below you want to think about clogging that or plugging that with something but of course you have to open it right so that might be more of a conven inconvenience for you so you might want to think about a towel for example so you can easily remove it now, at night, we turn the heat down to, I don't know, about 64, maybe 63. That number will depend. You don't want any frozen pipes, and you can experiment if you're thinking about cranking down the heat at night as 
well. Now, when you do crank down the heat, you're going to need blankets, and we have lots of fleece blankets in, on our bed and around the couches, and a very comfy like feather bed duvet kind of thing. Another idea, we installed a glass storm door on our front door, and it slides down, so it's it gets cross breeze in the summer, but in the winter, you can slide the glass up. You don't have to remove the pane or anything, um, which I really like, and it helps to create extra an extra layer in between the cold and the main door. Speaking of the main door, this is it. When it's closed, you might want to think about putting some weather stripping along the side here. I have done that before in previous homes. Don't really need to on this home. Um, it seems like it, it has a pretty good seal. I don't feel a lot of cold air, but we do, when it gets really cold, push a towel along the bottom, and that helps to keep some of that wind from coming in and during the day we crank it back up to 66 to 67 and that's about it hopefully a good way to do what you can to control the rising cost of energy thanks so much